there for 90 years. Prospect Hill Farm is right around this area. Cutter was self-educated, learning to read from the Bible and a handful of rel religious tracts belonging to his father. He authored 6,000 pieces of poetry, which he left to the Long Island Historical Society. On a boat trip to the Holy Land in 1867, he met Mark Twain, who gave him the name of poet Lariat in his book, Innocence Abroad. Cutter responded with, one droll person there was on board, a passenger called him Mark Twain. He talked and write all sorts of stuff in his queer way, would it explain? Uh, Bloodgood uh, Cutter was known as a gregarious person, a friendly person, but he was an extraordinarily bad poet. Um, <laughs> Nigel, take it away. Uh, this uh, obelisk, uh, as well also has the You want to get an idea of the kind of poetry this guy wrote? <laughs> oh, yes. You guys, sure, uh, yeah. we had anybody eat recently? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's what he wrote. Okay, you have to realize this was late 19th century and it was a very sentimental kind of a period. But he wrote, this is his wife speaking from beyond the grave because she, I guess, predeceased him. Blood good, blood good, do not weep. First, I was called in death to sleep. Oh, never did I think the time would come when I'd weep o'er my blood good. It's the kind of stuff he wrote. Another time, he was, um, he met Mark Twain in 1867 when they were, they had uh, shipped out together on the steamer Quaker City, which was uh, taking a pleasure trip, so-called, to the Holy Land. It was mostly religious people. Twain was distinctly irreligious, so I think they took him along kind of as a devil's advocate. <coughs> But he uh, met Cutter, and uh, that was how uh, Cutter ended up getting the title of the Poet Lariat. Um, the way uh, Twain described Cutter, basically, was that he said um, he had another passenger, whom we call the Oracle, who's a guy who went around giving speeches all the time, and he, was, he put his own words in the Oracle's mouth, and he was describing Cutter thusly. Well, I didn't expect nothing out of him. I never see one of them poets yet that knowed anything. He'll go down now and grind out about four reams of the awfulest slush about that old rock they just passed Gibraltar. 